Good evening. Call it sanctification, if you will. Call it discipleship. Call it growth to the image of Jesus Christ. The fact is that a believer who has become a new person in Jesus Christ may never stagnate in their relationship towards God or his neighbor. Of course, growth can only occur after a plant is planted. And therefore, one can only grow when you are through faith being planted into Christ. Of course, growth is something that only the Lord can awaken in you through his spirit. But despite this, no, precisely because of this, the believer has the ability, but also the obligation to grow in the Lord. The Bible is very clear about this. We must grow and increase in knowledge, in knowledge of God, in good works, in love, in faith and in joy. The Hebrew writer even go as far as to say, make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy, because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. The focus this week is therefore on our responsibility to grow in the Lord over and over again. And the confrontational question is, are you still growing in your relationship with the Lord and your neighbor. The Lord uses an image from the world of that time that was very familiar to everyone and to a certain extent is also familiar to us, that of a grapevine in a vineyard. It is a beloved image that is often used to portray the relationship between the Lord and his people. A vineyard is, after all, something valuable and useful to the owner. A vineyard is there for the sake of the owner. Together with this, a well-groomed or very neglected vineyard very definitely says something about the owner of the vineyard. Jesus reveals himself as the vine in the Father's vineyard. We read from John 15, verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will even more be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear fruit, much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he's like a branch that is thrown away and with us. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Some thoughts from the image for our life of growth in the Lord. Branches cannot grow on their own. They must be rooted into Christ. None of us can grow and bear fruit and live spiritually if we do not live Christ-rooted, Christ-like and Christ-focused. Without him, we can do nothing. Secondly, branches do not have a right to exist in themselves. Branches are not pretty. You cannot make furniture from them. Branches are exclusively there to bear fruit. Branches that do not bear fruit are cut down and destroyed by fire. Thus the purpose of our growth in the Lord must be to bear fruit that glorifies Him. The purpose of our growth in the Lord is not limited to our own growth, comfort or honor, but is there to bear better fruit. Thirdly, branches should be pruned to bear fruit. 
If this does not happen, they become wild roots that grow in their own direction, pulling all the moisture from the vine just for the sake of their own growth. Mercifully, the Lord does not leave us to grow on our own in, and in our own direction. Therefore, his word through fellow believers, through trials and temptations, he cuts us back so that we can bear more fruit. The fruit is to be born. The, bo the fruit to be born is described in the following verses. In verse 12 we read, You must love one another as I loved you. Very practically. We can ask ourselves whether our lives are growing in love for God and other people. And break this question even further down by asking on the end of Galatians 5, whether you are progressing in your pursuit of joy, of peace, of patience, of kindness, of goodness, of faithfulness. Are you growing in humility and in self-control? Finally, the fruit that branches bear is there so that the vine and eventually the owner of the vineyard can be praised. Good night.